Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial concepts and we try to discuss those concepts with the help of different questions. So for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group where we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So before getting started, there is another piece of information. As you all know that exams are around the corner, so we have come up with a crash course which will help you prepare for your RBI grade B exams. So this course has been launched at 40% discount offer. You can use this coupon code and uh, get this, this very discount. For further details, you can visit our website and fetch, the, uh, fetch all the course related details. So let's get started. This is the very first question which says what does it refer to over here. So as you can see here are two statements mentioned and we have to identify the concept which is being talked about over here. So let's read them one by one. The first one says it is the framework under which banks with weak financial metrics are put under watch by the RBI. Why? In order to assess, monitor and control the banks. So let's read the next statement as well and then we'll be discussing this concept. So the next statement says, it is an early intervention package. It is an early intervention package or resolution guideline by the RBI when, bank turns, when a bank turns weak in terms of some identified indicators. So both these points explain the concept which is actually the answer to this question. So let's first discuss about this very framework. So they are talking about a framework where they are regulating the banks. They are providing some kind of guidelines for the banks which will help in making sure that banks are functioning properly. They are fun their functioning is basically properly controlled by RBI. So with the help of this framework, RBI is able to control the functioning of RBI sorry RBI is able to control the functioning of the banks and how it does so it does so by specifying some parameters so what is happening under this framework for banks which are playing really very important role in the society banks play a very important role so it's very important to make sure that they continue to function in a healthy manner so what RBI does on the basis of certain parameters some indicators, some ratios have been specified which these banks need to maintain. If the banks are not able to maintain that ratio within the prescribed limits, then RBI will intervene. It will take some actions and take control over those banks. So the framework under which all these things are done is known as prompt corrective action. So what happens in prompt corrective action? RBI specifies that this much should be your capital ratios, this much should be your NPA ratios, this much profits bank should earn. If those criteria which are provided by RBI are not fulfilled by these banks, it means that banks are not functioning properly. There is something wrong which is going on. So in that case, RBI will basically take some actions in order to improve the functioning of those banks. It may mandate them not to expand their business, to not hire more new persons and many other such actions. So we'll be discussing what are those parameters, what are the ratios which have been prescribed by RBI, what are the threshold limits which when a bank surpasses, it will be taken under consideration by RBI and what actions can RBI take, all those things will be further covered in different questions. So what is this prompt corrective action? Beforehand only we are taking actions, we are having supervision on the banks in order to keep a check on them so that whenever their health begins to deteriorate, one can take the action beforehand only. So instead of waiting that banks perform and deteriorate and that it leads to some kind of a bank run or it develops into a major crisis, we beforehand only take some actions. So this is what is being talked about over here that we early on, earlier only take the intervention actions in order to make sure that banks continue to function in a proper manner. So this is the framework to assess, monitor the performance of banks and control the proper functioning of banks. So the answer to this question is option C. 
आई होप द कॉन्सेप्ट इज क्वाइट क्लियर कि पहले ही आप एक्शन लो पहले ही मेक श्योर sure करो कि जो बैंक हैं वो अधियर कर रहे हैं टू द स्टैंडर्ड जो आरबीआई ने सेट किए and if they are not adhering to those standards it means their performance is in a risky area and we need to take some actions to improve their performance so us case mein banks ko pca framework ke andar rakha jayega and rbi will take some actions to improve their performance now let's move on to question number 2 so this is question number 2 let's have a look at it it says which of the following statements correct are correctly related to the pca framework of india so we have to identify the correct statements now let us discuss a bit more about prompt corrective action so i already told you that on the basis of this framework some on the basis of some parameters this framework is basically dependent so on the basis of those parameters some indicators have been decided by rbi and banks have to adhere to such standards if they are not able to do so then rbi will intervene moreover this pca framework is only applicable to your commercial banks to your scheduled commercial banks it's not applicable to your cooperative banks neither is it applicable to any kind of an ndfc moreover talking about your regional rural banks so they take self corrective actions nabard specify what actions they should take under pca but this prompt corrective action framework where rbi intervenes it sets the standards it is meant only for your commercial banks so talking about the parameters these were three uh, these were three important parameters which end which were existing and then leverage was also added as an important parameter so what ratios have been prescribed under these parameters talking about capital now before discussing this it's very important that you would have gone through the basel norms uh, basel norm sessions session which i took earlier there were many terms which were used over there many standards which were specified over there and same things i will be using over here so if you are not clear with the terms you will not be able to understand the session properly so first go through the basel norm session and then you will be able to understand this session in a more better manner so talking about capital it's very important that banks maintain enough capital we discussed under basel also that against their risky assets they need to maintain enough capital so that banks have don't have to face any kind of a financial crunch so depending on that on the basis of this capital parameter two different ratios are basically considered to assess the performance of banks so what are those two ratios one is crar which is your capital risk weighted assets ratio which we also call as the capital adequacy ratio so this ratio determines that how much capital you are maintaining against your risk weighted assets again a thing which we already covered under basel second one is your common equity tier 1 ratio so common equity tier 1 ratio basically determines how much of tier 1 capital comprising of basically your equity comprising of your retained earnings is actually maintained by these banks against their risk weighted assets so these two ratios are used to uh, assess the capital adequacy of the banks next is your asset quality talking about asset quality the loans which the banks are relenting they are actually the assets of the banks people will pay them back along with some interest so it's very important that good quality loans are there for the banks in order to ensure their healthy performance now we also took a session on npas so what was that problem of npas when your loans are not being recovered on time on the prescribed time limits then we categorize them as the non performing assets now under asset quality you keep a check on your loans whether the loans of banks are actually of good quality or are they turning out to be npas so the ratio which we use under this is actually your net npa to your advances or loans ratio okay so here we see that out of the total loans which the bank has given how many much of them are actually turning out to be your npas then we have the third parameter which is profitability 
Now it's also very important to assess if the banks are functioning in a profitable manner or not. So for that also we have a ratio and that ratio is basically your return on assets ratio where we see how much is basically the income which is generated for these banks vis-a-vis -vis the assets which they are investing. And last is leverage. This was also covered under Basel 3 where leverage rate was prescribed. So under leverage we see how much is the tier 1 capital vis-a-vis -vis the total assets so that those so that that capital can be used in case of any financial crunch kind of a situation. So these four criteria have been specified. Here we use the tier 1 leverage ratio where we see how much is the tier 1 capital this is your total asset. So on the basis of these parameters, these ratios have been specified and some limits have been provided by RBI that how much should be your CRAR, how much should be your net NPA. And if it's not within that limit, that means banks are risky and so the RBI will intervene. Now let's move back to our question and identify the correct statements. So the first one says capital, asset quality, profitability and leverage are the parameters for your prompt corrective action. This is the most obvious statement. I already discussed these four parameters just now. Next one says net non-performing advances ratio is the indicator of profitability parameter under PC. No, this statement is wrong. I told you that net NPA is basically how your loans are performing. So it's an indicator of asset quality and not of profitability. So this statement is wrong. Now talking about the third statement, it says CRAR and the common equity tier 1 ratio are the indicators used to assess the capital adequacy. Yes, through this we assess whether, whether the banks are maintaining enough capital or not. So this statement is correct. And the fourth one says the PCA framework is applicable only to the commercial banks. So this statement is again correct. It is meant for commercial banks and not for your NBFCs or your other cooperative banks. So the Correct statements are 1, 3 and 4. So the answer is option D. Now let's move on to our next question. So this is the third question. It says which of the following statement is incorrect about the trigger points under PCA framework. So before reading these statements, let us discuss about these trigger points or this these risk thresholds. As I've already told you that under this very framework, some indicators are there and some threshold limits have been specified. If banks surpass that limit, then the action will be taken by RBI. So what are those limits? Let's have a look at this table. So as far as the CRAR ratio and the set ratios are concerned, I covered this in Basel as well that the capital adequacy ratio plus your capital conservation buffer was specified as these rates. So I will not explain the concept of capital conservation buffer again. You can watch it from the Basel video. So the total of both of these is 10.875. So this should be your CRAR ratio plus your capital conservation buffer. But if it is not able to, the banks are not able to maintain it at this rate and your uh, capital adequacy ratio begins to fall below this percent but it is still above 8.375% uh, or it is equal to that then you are put up under risk threshold 1. That means your functioning begins to turn out risky although it is not that risky which it will be if you move to this threshold 2 or 3. So within this threshold, there are certain actions which are taken by RBI. If you turn out to be more risky, then more stricter actions will be taken. Similarly, if your this ratio begins to deteriorate even further, that is, you are not able to maintain even this much of your CR, AR plus your capital conservation buffer, then you will move on to risk threshold 2. That is, when your this ratio is less than 8.37, 5% but it is still at least equal to or more than 6.875%. Now talking about the set 1 plus capital conservation buffer. So set 1 should be this much, capital conservation buffer should be this much. One thing I would like to tell that why we are taking capital conservation this much and not 2.5%. In basal session only I 
uh, I took a one question where I told you that remaining portion of this capital conservation buffer is to be implemented in India from October 2021. It was uh, decided that it will be implemented in April in 2020. 2020 only but because of covid it was postponed the things were deferred it was shifted to april 2021 and recently and as per the notice it has further been deferred to october 2021 so instead of 2.5 percent that is the reason why we are taking 1.875 percent so this should be the set rate the total of this is 7.375 so this much should have been maintained but if you are not able to maintain this much, but still at least you are maintaining it at a rate higher than or equal to 5.75, then you are in risk threshold 1. But if this ratio of yours deteriorates even further, that is, it deteriorates below this rate, but it is still equal to or more than 4.25%, then you are under risk threshold 2. But if, if it further deteriorates and it is less than 4.25%, then you are put under the risk threshold 3. Now, this was related to your capital part. Talking about further ratios, the limits or the thresholds have been prescribed over here as well. Talking about asset quality, we use net non-performing advances ratio. So, it must be maintained between 6 to 9 percent. So, the more higher this ratio is, that means you are having more net NPAs. So, that this ratio should be less, it will ensure that you are functioning in a proper manner. But if this ratio begins to increase, if you are not able to maintain at this rate, and if it begins to rise but still is less than 12 percent, then you are put up under this threshold 2. But it is, if it is rising even further, it is more than 12 percent, then you are under this threshold. Three. In a similar fashion, for profitability also we have return on assets ratio. So the risk threshold which have been specified under this case include your negative ROA for two consecutive years. So if for two consecutive years you are having negative returns, then you are under risk threshold 1. If this period is for three consecutive years, then you are under risk threshold 2. And if it is for four, you consecutive years, then you are put up under risk threshold 3. Similarly, for tier 1 leverage ratio, also some limits have been prescribed, like it should be between 3.5 to 4 percent. If it is less than 3.5, then you are put under the risk threshold 2. So, till now, this has been the threshold limit which has been prescribed. Now, talking about what kind of actions can RBI take. I'm, I'm saying every now and then that RBI, RBI can intervene, it can take some actions against these banks. These banks, if are not able to maintain these limits and are put up under three risk thresholds, then some actions will be taken. So, let's discuss a bit about these actions. So, I will briefly cover some of the actions which RBI can take. Now, if banks are under risk one threshold, so what RBI can do? RBI can take some mandatory actions like it can restrict the dividend distribution by, by these banks. It can also impose restrictions on banks that if they are operating in some foreign nation, then they cannot send the profit to their parent company. So such kind of actions can be taken by RBI. Similarly, if the banks move to a more risky threshold, that is threshold 2, then more stricter actions will be taken. In this case, RBI in addition to the threshold 1 actions can take some other actions as well. Like it can restrict the expansion of such banks, it cannot open the branches in, um, in other parts of the country or maybe internationally. And then in this threshold 3, some more additions are made. Like you can't, you basically restrictions will be imposed on how much fees you are paying to the directors, what is the compensation which you are paying to the management. So somehow or the other it starts intervening in the business of the banks. Now these were some mandatory actions. Other than that, some other discretionary actions can also be taken. For example, some strategy related actions can be taken where they will basically modify your business models, they will help in re-engineering your businesses. So such actions can be taken by RBI, they will review your business strategy. Some governance related actions can be taken, they will govern your uh, management, your directors. Then capital action, how to raise capital, from where to raise capital, all those things can also be taken over by RBI. Then they will also deal with the credit risk, they will help in the NPA resolution part. 
then the market risk related factors, they can restrict the borrowings, they will not allow you to borrow from interbank market or from uh, or engaging in other derivative activities. Then they can also take some HR related action where they will restrict that you can't hire more new staff if you need them also. Then some profitability related, operations related. So different actions can be taken up by RBI. When I will be providing you with the document that is for the enrolled students, I will cover these pointers over there. Otherwise, you can also visit the RBI website and try to find out this very document and you will find that what actions is RBI actually taking. So this was the concept which I wanted to discuss. Now let's move back to our question and read these statements. We have to identify the incorrect ones. The first one says that the risk threshold 1 in case of breach of CRAR plus capital conservation buffer is having a CRAR less than 10.875 but more than or equal to 8.375. This is from the very first chart only, this thing. So this is correct. So first statement is correct. Second one says that the risk threshold 2 in case of breach of common equity tier 1 plus capital conservation buffer. It's very important that you don't get confused. Here we are talking about CRAR plus this. Here we are talking about set 1 ratio plus this. So is set 1 plus ratio specified between these limits? No, these were limits for CRAR. So this statement is incorrect. Talking about the third statement, it says the risk threshold 3 in case of breach of common equity tier 1 plus capital conservation buffer is less than this but more than this. This is again incorrect. It was 4.2, less than 4.25%. So only statement which is correct is first, we had to identify the incorrect ones. The so second and third are incorrect answer is option D. Now let's move on to the last question. So this is related to the recent status of your PCA framework in India. Let's have a look at this question. So this question says, which of the following banks are under prompt corrective action framework as per 2020 reporting? So 2020 may कौन से ऐसे banks हैं which were kept under the prompt corrective action and are there taking steps to improve their performance? So before looking at the options, let me discuss about this. A bit with you all. So talking about the PCA framework in a recent scenario before 2019. So 2019, the very late up status was that 11 public sector banks were under the PCA framework. So it means that uh, public sector banks were not able to function in a proper manner. Their health was deteriorating, and some actions were taken by RBI against them. So which in out of those 11 banks? Some have been rescued out and some are still under the, were still under the PCA framework. So which bank was out of this framework? These are the banks. The Bank of Maharashtra, the Bank of India, the Oriental Bank of Commerce, Allahabad Bank and your Corporation Banks. They were out of this framework in 2019. Okay. But still some banks remained in this category. So out of these 11 these five were out and the six banks which still remain in this category as per March 2019 were your Dena Bank, United Bank of India, IDBI Bank, Yuko Bank, Central Bank of India and the Indian Overseas Banks. So these six banks were there under PCA framework in 2019. Now talking about Dena Bank, it has been merged with your Bank of Baroda. So its existence is not there, it has merged. Then talking about IDBI Bank, it has also been acquired by LIC. So remaining four banks are still under this category of PCA. As for 2020, four banks were under PCA and those four banks were Indian Overseas Bank, Central Bank of India, Yuko Bank and the United Bank of India. So these are the four banks which were under this category in 2020. The actions are being taken by government. Government is trying to provide them some funding. It is trying to take some actions so that it can help these banks to come out of the PCA category, improve in their functioning and continue to function in a proper manner. So if you have to look at the answer to this question, it's Indian Overseas 
Central Bank, Yuko Bank, and your United Bank of India. So, which option says that these four banks, which option mentions these four banks? It is option B. Remaining were some banks which were either out of this, this basically framework in 2019 or they were still there. So, this is the answer. This was all for today's session. I hope you found this session to be useful. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.